this is your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we are going to create uh, inverses. Let's do it. Let's get started. The instructions say determine whether the function is one-to-one. -one. If it is, find the formula for its inverse. So we are going to graph 9x minus 1, And there you have a constantly increasing line, a line with a positive slope. This is definitely one-to-one -one if you draw a horizontal line through it. Therefore, this has um, an inverse. So first let's answer the question, is the function one-to-one? -one? Yes. Now, find the formula for the inverse, and incidentally, this is the symbol for inverse function. It does not mean 1 over. It's just the symbol for an inverse function. Remember, math is its own foreign language. All right, it's a foreign language to everybody who wasn't born in mathematics, and most people weren't that I know. So let's do this. This is how you find, ah, come on now. Don't give me trouble. There we go. This is how you find the formula for an inverse. We've got f, f of x equals 9, x minus 1. Now I'm going to say y equals 9x minus 1. Now I'm going to switch the letters because remember, when you've got an inverse, the x-coordinates and the y-coordinates are interchanged. So I'll say x equals 9y minus 1. Now I solve for y. I'll add 1 to both sides so that I have x plus 1 equals 9y. And then to solve for y, I divide by 9 and divide by 9. So y equals x plus 1 over 9 is my inverse function. So we're going to write it here. It's going to be a fraction. I'll have x plus 1 on top and 9 on the bottom. And I did it right. OK, let's move on. Determine whether this function is 1 to 1. If it is, find a formula for its inverse. OK, let's clear this. And I'm going to say x caret 3, and then right arrow key to bring the cursor down, minus 7. x to the third minus 7. I'm going to graph it. And yes, imagine drawing a lot of horizontal lines through it. Those lines will only intersect the graph at one point. Therefore, x to the third minus 7 is 1 to 1. OK. Now it wants me to find the inverse. Here we go. Oops. What have I done? Now, here we go. I have y, well, I'll just call it y instead of f of x. y equals x to the third minus 7. So x equals y to the third minus 7. Add 7 to both sides. We'll have x plus 7 equals y to the third. Now I'm going to take the cube root of both sides. The cube root 
of x plus 7 equals the cube root of y to the third. So y equals the cube root of x plus 7. Let's see if that's right. Cube root x plus 7. This is the inverse function of this. Now we're going to do the same thing. Determine whether the function f of x is 1 to 1. If it is 1 to 1, find a formula for the inverse. So, ah, we're going to graph it first, aren't we? Okay. Clear. And now, I'm going to go find the cube root. All right, we'll take the cube root of 3x and graph it. Yes, this is definitely a one-to-one -one function. This never flattens out. It always tends downward. This always tends upward. So this function is constantly increasing on its domain, which is one of the functions of a one-to-one, -one, uh, the, one of the definitions of a one-to-one -one function. Either constantly increasing on its domain or constantly decreasing on its domain. So yes, this is a one-to-one -one function. Now find the inverse. Okay, I will. Here we go. If f of x equals the cube root of 3x, then y, because f of x is y, equals the cube root of 3x. That's a 3, believe it or not. Now, x is going to equal the cube root of 3y. I have to solve for y. So I have to get y out from under the cube root. So I am going to cube both sides of the equation in so that cubing the cube root will get rid of the cube root because these are inverse operations. Cubing and taking cube roots are inverse operations, so they undo each other. All right, so I'll have x to the third equals 3y then divide by 3 in order to get y by itself. Isolate y. y equals x to the third over 3. In other words, to write it the way my math lab wants you to write it, f inverse of x is going to equal x cubed divided by 3. Now. Let's go and do this. I'll have x cubed divided by 3. And it doesn't seem to be asking me anything else. All right, let's go on. All right, now it says choose the graph that shows a graph of a one-to-one -one function and its inverse. Well, one-to-one -one functions and their inverses are reflected across from each other along a diagonal line called y equals x. A 
It's like they're mirror images. I vote for A. Let's see. All right. Imagine the blue line um, being reflected as though it had its mirror image across the line y equals x, which runs at a 45 degree angle, constantly increasing from left to right. Okay, that's all we're being asked there. Let's go on to 11. For the function f of x equals 3x minus 4, determine whether f of x is 1 to 1. It is. Why? Because this is the equation of a straight line with a positive slope. So it's constantly increasing uh, across its domain. However, we'll graph it and you'll see. If so, find a formula for the inverse, give the domain and the range for f inverse, and then graph both functions on the same axes. Well, this will be fun. Thank goodness we're using a graphing calculator. I'm going to clear that. Now, 3x minus 4. Graph. That's the line 3x minus 4. It's definitely constantly increasing along its domain, therefore it's 1 to 1. However, if you can imagine drawing horizontal lines through it, all of those horizontal lines would just cross the graph at one point. Therefore, this is 1 to 1. So, we are going to find, let's see, oh, first, is the function 1 to 1? Yes. Check. OK. Now, we're going to find the inverse. Here we go. f of x equals 3x minus I don't know if you can hear my cat crying in the background, but I just got back from out of town and I just brought the dogs back from where I was boarding them. I was boarding them at my vet and the cats had the luxury of not having the dogs around for three days. They loved it. Now, now they have to get used to having the dogs around again. I have one unhappy kitty on my hands. Anyway, I'll rewrite this as y equals 3x minus 4, and then x equals 3y minus 4. So x plus 4 equals 3y, and y is going to equal x plus 4 over 3. So f inverse of x is x plus 4 over 3. Let's write it. x plus 4 divided by 3. Check answer. OK. Now, choose the correct domain. Notice I do not have an x in the denominator. I only have the number 3. So I'm not going to have any holes in my domain. The domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. How do I know that? Because I'm about to graph it. I also know this is also a straight line, and therefore that's going to be the range. Okay, now we're going to graph both of these on the same axes. Let me see if they have choices. Nope, no choices. So we're going to do that. Oh, it says continue. 
There you go, those sneakies. All right, let's graph it up here. I'm going to go to Y2, and I'm going to graph parentheses. Ah, oh, wait a minute, let me pull this out. Parentheses x plus 4 divided by 3. That's what my inverse function is. Parentheses x plus 4, parentheses closed, divided by 3. And I am going to do something a little sneaky here. <coughs> Excuse me, allergies. I'm going to hit Enter and make the line thicker so that you can tell the difference between this line and this line. Now I'm going to graph. So that, this is the original function. This is the inverse. Ah, uh, definitely this looks like it's the answer. They sure look alike. I vote for that. Aha. Good. Okay, let's try one more. For the function f of x equals 2 over x, determine whether f of x is 1 to 1. If so, find a formula for the inverse. So I already know it's 1 to 1. In fact, I think we graphed it earlier. But let's find out for sure. I'm going to clear and clear and go back up here and say 2 divided by x graph. This is a one by one bah. It's a one to one function. It passes the horizontal line test. It's difficult to see on a graphing calculator, but if you were to graph this on paper, you would definitely see that this uh, function is one to one. All right, so we're going to find the inverse function. Here we go. f of x equals 2 over x, which means y equals 2 over x. Now, x then equals 2 over y. I need to solve for y. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by y so that these y's zero out. Now I'll have y times x equals 2. To get y by itself, I'll divide both sides of the equation by x so that these x's cancel out and I'll be left with, oh my goodness, the same exact thing. y equals 2 over x. That is, the inverse is exactly the same as the original function. That happens sometimes. So yes, this was 1 to 1. Whoop, 1 to 1. And f inverse is going to be 2 over x. Well done. What is the domain of this? Well, you know there's going to be a hole in the domain. x cannot equal 0. So our domain is going to be from negative uh, infinity to 0, but not including 0, united with the other side of 0 all the way to infinity, d. Now, the range, notice that the range is not going to go through y equals 0, which is the x-axis. The x-axis is the horizontal asymptote. So my range 
is going to be negative infinity to 0, but it will be negative infinity down here up to 0. And then the other side of 0 all the way to positive infinity. But we're talking about the y-axis. OK, so you get the idea. And I bet you can have fun from here. Uh-oh, we're going to have to choose. Oh, dear. Well, guess what? It's this. There we go. I mean, the function and its inverse are both exactly the same function. OK, talk to you later.